The first thing you should do on your Flip 4 is fully customize the cover screen to not only make it look cooler, but to also add much more functionality to it. Let's start by customizing the clock screen. To do this, just long press the clock, and you'll be given a bunch of different clock options. But to make it even easier to edit, let's scroll all the way to the end and tap cover screen settings. Now we'll just open up our phone, unlock it, and we get much more customization options. When you first get your Flip 4, you won't have a live background. Instead, you'll just have a plain black background, and it's gonna start with this clock right here. This top section gives you a bunch of different clock options, and the only thing you can change with these when you tap customize is the color of the clock. And that's with the exception of this next option, which lets you add the time from another city. Further down, you get some graphical options, and some of these are little videos that you can customize with a few different options. And these also give you the same text color option as well. And each of these are customizable in their own different way. This one with the little characters can be customized by adding your own custom characters. So they give you some options of characters to start with, or you can even create one that looks like you by using the camera. From there, you can fully customize their look and style. If you'd prefer to use your own custom animated background, all you'd have to do is select one of these clocks up here, then tap clock background image and choose from your gallery. So as you can see down here, I downloaded some short videos and if I select one of those, then tap done, I'll be able to adjust the position of that video. I can even zoom in a bit, get it to about where I want it to be, then just tap confirm and that'll be my new background and that'll remain there with any one of these clocks. And if you ever wanna just remove that background, you would tap the minus option. If instead of selecting a single video for the background, you went ahead and selected a video as well as a few images, then tap done, you'd be given the option to adjust each individual image. And when you tapped confirm, it would then cycle through all three of those images. Once you're done setting up your clock screen, it's time to customize your widgets. To get to your widgets, just swipe to the right of the clock screen. And to customize them, just long press any one of them. And from here, you'll be able to long press again and drag to any other position you'd like. If there's a widget that you don't use, you can just tap the minus icon. And if you wanna add new widgets, you can scroll all the way to the end and tap add widget. To get even more widget customization, let's go ahead and open the foam. From here, you're gonna to go to settings, then scroll down to cover screen, then go to widgets. And from here, it'll be much easier to customize which widgets you want. One of the most important widgets to set up if you have any smart devices is the SmartThings Scenes widget. This lets you run any of your SmartThings scenes right from the cover screen. And you can also reorder them by dragging these bars. Just know that you'll be limited to a maximum of four scenes on the cover screen widget. Direct Dial is another great widget that allows you to immediately call up to three of your contacts. And if you have the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro and enable this widget, you'll be able to change your sound mode from active noise canceling to ambient sound mode to none. And you can also enable or disable the touch controls. This would be good to disable if you were going for a run and didn't want to accidentally change the track you were listening to when you just wanted to adjust your earbuds. Jumping back into the widget settings, you also get this reorder option at the top, which lets you reorder them however you'd like. And once you're done reordering, just tap the back button to confirm. The next thing you should do to make your cover screen more useful is enable Samsung Wallet. And the reason for that is from the clock screen, you can simply swipe up and open up Samsung Wallet without having to open your phone. Now, since I haven't finished the setup process yet myself, it's telling me I still need to add a card. But if I'd already added a card, it would allow me to just use my fingerprint to activate it and make a mobile payment without ever opening my phone. And a quick bonus tip, if you swipe down from the clock screen, you get quick access to some of your toggles, including your flashlight. And right here, it just tells you to point the light away from your eyes before pressing one of the volume keys to enable the light. Then from there, you can press the volume key again, and that'll turn the light back off. If you double press the side key while your phone is closed, it's going to take you to the camera application and let you take a picture with your rear facing cameras. That's nothing new, but I did wanna show you guys that if you double tap the screen, you'll be able to get a full sized preview and you'll be able to see exactly what's in the shot. This is especially useful if you swiped up to get an ultra wide shot, then turned your phone sideways to fit a bunch of people in the shot. This will make it much easier to perfectly line up your shots. Just keep in mind that if you were to leave the camera application, then jump back into it, you would have to double tap the screen again to go back to that full view. And this full view works in all of the camera modes. The next thing you should do to improve the functionality of the cover screen is the first time you get a message, go ahead and tap the message, then scroll down a bit and you'll see some reply options here. But the most important thing is this little microphone icon. The first time you tap this, it'll ask you to grant the phone some permissions in order to use your microphone to send messages. Once you grant that, 
All you have to do is unlock the phone with your finger. Then you can just speak the message that you want to send, period. And you can also say things like smiley face. And if the message doesn't come out quite right, you can tap try again and try dictating your message again. This is a super useful feature if you just want to send a quick reply without having to jump all the way into the messaging application. Now that you've substantially increased the functionality of your cover screen, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of the foam. Since this is an expensive device, one of the first things you want to do is go to settings, then biometrics and security, then enable this option here called find my mobile. If you tap the find my mobile text, you'll be shown a web address that you should save to another device. If you navigate to this address, and log into your Samsung account, you'll be able to see exactly where your phone is. Not only that, but you can also ring your phone, you can remotely lock your phone, and this does more than just locking the screen. You can also lock any cards you have in Samsung Wallet, as well as any Samsung Pass features. And further down, you also get the option to lock the power off feature. So if somebody stole your phone and they're trying to turn it off so that you can't find them, you'll be able to disable that feature here so that they can't shut it off. You can also track the location in real time, remotely erase the data on your phone, remotely back up the data, and this even includes things like your messages, settings, home screen setup, and even your applications. Further down, you can also save all of this other information as long as it's backed up to your Samsung account. You can even retrieve calls and messages. So if the person who stole your phone tried to make a call or send any texts, you'd actually be able to see who they called and what they sent for a text. You could also remotely unlock your device if you accidentally left it at a friend's house and you need them to get some information off of it for you. You can turn on power saving mode to extend the battery life to give you more time to find the phone. Set Guardians was a feature that would allow you to give other people access to some of these features. But for some reason, Samsung's going to be disabling this mode soon, so you can go ahead and ignore it. If you own a Windows computer, you have to turn on this next feature. Go ahead and pull down your notification shade twice to reveal all of your quick toggles. Then swipe across until you find a toggle called Link to Windows. If you don't see it in one of these three pages, tap the plus icon because it may be up here somewhere. If it is up here, just long press it and drag it down. Once you've found the toggle, go ahead and tap it. Then go through the setup process to connect your phone to your computer. Once that's done, you'll be able to send and receive text directly from your computer using your computer's keyboard. Link to Windows also lets you easily transfer files back and forth between your phone and your computer. And you can even control any of your applications right from the computer. The most important thing you should do when you get your Flip 4 is go to the channel page and subscribe. Then make sure notifications are set to all so you don't miss my deep dive coverage on the Flip 4. And for those of you who are already subscribed, my analytics are showing me that less than 8% of you have notifications enabled, which means most of you guys will never be notified when I upload a new video. So even if you're already subscribed, go ahead and double check to see if you have notifications turned on. By default, when you're on your home screens, if you swipe over to the leftmost screen, you'll be met with either Google Discover or Samsung Free. To change which news aggregator you want to use or completely disable it, just go back to one of your main home screens and pinch in to bring in your settings. You could also long press in an empty space to bring up the same settings, then swipe over to the left again, and you can switch between Google Discover or Samsung Free, or tap this toggle at the top to completely disable it. Once it's disabled, if you go to your home screens again and swipe to the left, nothing will happen. Jumping back into these settings, if you tap widgets, Samsung now supports stackable widgets with this smart widget option. So let's go ahead and select this 4x1 widget to check it out. Once the widget's added, you can swipe across it to reveal the other widgets. And if you long press the widget, you can add any other widget you have available on your device. So let's go ahead and add a Smart Things Scenes widget, and we'll select a few scenes and reorder them, then tap Done. And now I'll have super fast access to enable my studio lights or turn them back off. And if I need to go to one of the other widgets, I'll just swipe across again. Long pressing again gives you the option to remove the current widget. And if we go back into that menu again, you can change the current widget settings. So this will allow you to change the background color as well as the transparency. And you can also have it match with your current dark mode settings. And if I save this and swipe through my widgets, you'll see that none of the other widgets were affected. Only the Samsung Notes widget was affected by the changes. And long pressing one more time, we also get this settings option down here. And if we tap that, we're able to customize the settings for all of the widgets in one place. You also get the option to change the widget order from here as well. The next thing you want to do is activate Bixby. And before you dislike this video and block the channel because of your disdain for Bixby, give me just 20 seconds and I'll show you an incredibly useful feature with Bixby. To activate Bixby for the first time, just hold the side key and you'll be taken into the Bixby app where you can go through the setup process. Once Bixby is enabled, you'll be able to hold the side key 
and dictate whatever you want into any text field, period. And you can even add things like a smiley face. The Flip 4 is a pretty tall device, and it's difficult to reach the top corners without some pretty good finger gymnastics. That's why you should go to Settings, then scroll down to Advanced Features, and enable one-handed mode. This will allow you to swipe down on the home button to shrink the entire screen and make it much easier to reach the corners. And if you grab the corner of this window, you'll be able to make it either larger or smaller to fit your specific hand size. And if you tap these arrows, you can switch it to the left or right side depending on if you're left or right-handed. And grabbing the bar at the top lets you move it up and down the side of the foam. To get out of this mode, all you have to do is tap outside of the window. And what's great about this is the next time you go back into that mode, it's going to remember exactly how you had the window set up. If you tap the one-handed mode text, you'll be able to switch from using the swipe down gesture to activate it to a double tap option where you just have to double tap the home button to activate it. The next thing you should do on your Flip 4 is go to settings, then display, then scroll down until you get to navigation bar and tap that. This will give you some really useful features if you're coming from a non-Samsung device. So if your previous device had the back button on the left side, you can change that by tapping right here. And if you're coming from an iPhone, you're definitely going to want to enable the swipe gestures. This works just like the iPhone navigation in that you can swipe up to go home, swipe up and hold to review all of your recent applications, swipe across the bottom to quickly go back and forth between your most recent applications, and you can even swipe in from the sides to go back. And that works from both the left and right side. And the back gestures even work in any application, not just applications that support it like on the iPhone. And if you jump back into the navigation bar settings, you see that there's more options for the swipe gestures. Most notably, you can change the sensitivity of the back gesture. So if you notice that you're often enabling it by mistake, just lower the sensitivity. And if you notice that it's not enabling when you want it to, just increase the sensitivity. And one more important thing to point out about this iPhone style navigation is that if you want to get to the Google Assistant, you just have to swipe in and up from one of the bottom corners. And the last option with these swipe gestures is to switch to this three bar option. And this will give you three separate bars at the bottom of your screen. And the left one is for back, the middle one is for going home, and the right one is for bringing up your recent applications. The next thing you should do to make it easier to navigate around your device is customize the Apps Edge Edge panel because this allows you to quickly jump back and forth between your most frequently used applications. But beyond getting to your favorite applications faster, you can also long press one of the applications and drag it out to quickly start a multi-window view. And since this is such a tall screen, this is incredibly useful for something like YouTube and an internet browser or a messaging application. And that's especially true if you grab this bar and push it all the way up when watching a YouTube video. To edit your Apps Edge, just pull it out, tap these three bars on the bottom, then tap Edit. From here, you can add your most frequently used applications. And as you add more applications, you'll end up with two rows and the apps will get a little bit smaller to fit more on the screen. And you can also long press an application and drag it onto another one to create a folder. And you can add as many apps as you'd like to a folder. If you don't have the Edge panel enabled, you can enable it by going to Settings, Display, then scrolling down until you see Edge Panels, you can turn the toggle on, then tap the Edge Panels text, then tap the word Panels, and you can enable whichever panels you'd like. And there are a bunch to choose from. If you have more than one panel enabled, all you have to do is swipe across it to get to your other panels. If you go to Settings, then scroll down to Advanced Features, then go to Labs, you'll see an option at the bottom called Swipe for Split Screen. If you enable this, you'll be able to swipe up from the bottom with two fingers to activate multi-window view. If there's an app pair that you use all the time and you want to save it for quick access, all you have to do is tap the three dots, then tap the star icon. From here, you'll be given the option to save the pair to your home screen or to the Apps Edge panel. And once you save it to something, you'll see an app pair that looks like this. And what's great about this is it also remembers the specific orientation of the two applications. So if I were to drag this bar all the way down, but then go back into my Apps Edge and reopen the app pair, it would readjust the windows to the size that I set with the app pair. If you jump back into your settings, then go to biometrics and security, then to fingerprints, you get the option to enable this feature called fingerprint always on. And what this does is allow you to unlock your phone by simply touching the sensor instead of having to push the button. And this just makes unlocking the device a little bit easier. And while we're talking about fingerprints, if you want even more accurate fingerprint sensing, there's two things you can do. The first thing is to register the same fingerprint to two fingerprint slots. The second option is to register your fingerprint with this method. You're going to want to start with the edge of your finger and slowly work your way across to the other edge of your finger. After that, you should still have some registrations left, 
So now go a bit further down on your finger and do the same thing. And you should still have a little bit of registrations left after that, so just do it one more time but with the tip of your finger instead. That's the scanning method I've been using for years and I always get a flawless fingerprint reading. Jumping back into settings and going down to advanced features, then motions and gestures, you see an option at the bottom called finger sensor gestures and you get two great options here. This first option opens up your notification shade anytime you swipe down on the fingerprint sensor. And if you swipe down a second time, it pulls it down further so you can get to all of your quick toggles. And if you swipe up from here, it'll dismiss the notification shade. The second option is to open up Samsung wallet by swiping up, but this gesture only works when you're on the home screen. The next feature that you should turn on is found in your quick toggles. So go ahead and swipe through your quick toggles until you see this option called always on display and go ahead and enable it. But after you enable it, also tap the always on display text. From here, you can switch it from tap to show to show always. So now I'm gonna go ahead and tap done and close the phone. So since I set it to show always, I'll always be able to just glance over at my phone on a table and quickly see the time and even my battery percentage. And since I personally use a smaller clock, it's gonna barely use any extra battery life. Then when I wanna activate the display, all I have to do is double tap it. If you wanna get the most battery life possible without sacrificing any performance or features, go ahead and pull your notification shade down twice to reveal your quick toggles and scroll across until you find a toggle called dark mode and enable that. This will change all the white backgrounds to black backgrounds on your phone. And the reason this saves a lot of battery life is because this has an OLED screen. And the way OLED screens work is that any black space on the screen actually has the pixels turned completely off, thus saving some battery life. If you also have a Samsung tablet like this Tab S8 Ultra, the first thing you should do is jump onto my channel and check out my top 50 unknown Tab S8 Ultra features so you guys can get the most out of your device. After that, you should go to the quick toggles on your Flip 4 and scroll across until you find one called Calls and Texts on Other Devices and enable it here. Then you wanna do the same thing on the tablet. Once that's set up on both devices, the tablet will show you which device you're connected to. And once it's connected, you'll be able to send and receive both text and phone calls directly on your tablet. The only caveat with this is if you wanna make and receive calls specifically, both devices need to be on the same Wi-Fi network. But if you just wanna send and receive texts, only the tablet needs to be on the Wi-Fi network and your phone can be somewhere completely different on a mobile network. So that means you could technically leave your phone home and take your tablet to some place that has Wi-Fi and still be able to send and receive texts. If you wanna get the most out of your Flip 4, check out this video over here. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss my deep dive coverage. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.